Today I am going to show you how to overclock a Dell XPS 630 uh, computer. This system has a Core 2 Duo E8400 which operates at 3 GHz with a front side bus of 1333. First we're going to go into the BIOS. So while the system is booting up, most systems including Dell use F2 to enter setup. You'll want to tab over to the advanced tab. First thing I do is click on CPU feature. Here we have a bunch of settings. The ones that we're interested in enabling or disabling is the C1E function. This is where it allows your computer to enter a state of lower power consumption, the CPU, when it's not in use. It's good if on a stock system, but when you overclock, it's best to disable that because uh, it can interfere with the stability of your system. Also, speed step allows your multiplier on the processor to be lowered, thus decreasing the CPU speed, which enables power savings. This can also interfere with overclock stability, so I suggest disabling that as well. Once we have those two disabled, we will back out and go to our overclock configuration. I'll zoom in a little bit here. As you can see, this is the stock setup. The FSB memory clock mode needs to be switched to unlinked. And I've already overclocked the system before, so it actually saved my settings, but normally you would see a 1333 FSB in here. We are going to change it to 1560 front side bus. What that does is it brings our memory, the actual memory DDR, down to 780 megahertz. This is DDR2800 memory. So actually we're underclocking our memory. Uh, the reason I like to do this though, if you Notice, it will keep a FSB to DRAM multiplier of 1, 1, which is actually ideal. So I'm underclocking my memory a couple of percent, but the difference is negligible. And actually, with the overclock on the processor itself, we're still seeing uh, a lot uh, better performance uh, with an FSB to DRAM 1, 1. Now with this, on the Dell, the voltage settings are all on auto. Uh, what I like to do is uh, make a note of the current values before overclocking. Uh, you'll notice here like the CPU core uh, voltage is 1.2125, uh, uh, CPU FSB, memory voltage, and chipset voltage. Uh, I'm going to take these off auto because the board tends to overcompensate for voltage uh, if you leave it on to auto. And I've already tried these settings, uh, random six hours stable on OCCT uh, without any instability at all. And six hours on that is, is like murder on a processor, on a system. By default, they suggest only one hour, so six hours is quite a bit. Uh, we're going to lower the CPU core to 1.20. That's well within the range that Intel specifies for this chip. Uh, the CPU FSB 1.10 is a little too low for stability. So I have to bump that up to 1.25. Memory voltage, we'll leave it auto. Uh, chipset voltage, 1.25 was having a little bit of instability, so we have to use 1.30 with my overclock settings uh, in order to get stability. So there you have it. Those settings are all within range for voltages. They all look good. Now we just exit and save our settings. What we're going to go ahead and do is just go back in to make sure our overclock settings took. So go to advance. Of course, CPU feature, we disable those two speed step and C1E. If you notice, speed step's already disabled uh, with the overclock. Overclock configuration. There we go. 3.5 gigahertz with a 1560 front side bus, 780 megahertz on the actual memory. Now I could unlock 
I could actually, uh, what do we do here? We could actually set the memory ourselves, but uh, we really don't, I don't really suggest that. I like the one to one FSB DRAM ratio. Over voltage we go into here. And you'll notice CPU core, everything's stuck. The current values match the set values. So we're good. And that's how you overclock your system. I'm not going to save any changes. We didn't make any. I'll let this thing boot up. These are times where I wish I had an SSD drive. Now if we want to check our overclock settings, we can go here into CPU ID or CPU Z. Virus database has been updated. And there you will actually see the overclock. Core speed, 3510, 9x multiplier, 1560 FSB. You can even see the voltage, see, 1.16. I set it at 1.20, but you have VDROOP and the voltages are never accurate uh, necessarily in CPU ID. Back out here and I'll quickly show you the memory and why I chose to use the slight underclock. You see the FSB DRAM ratio 1-1? That is excellent for uh, actually system speed. It actually improves your system speed some. So the memory clocks are all stock. I can actually probably lower the memory clocks a little bit tighten them up uh, with the underclock DRAM, but in my opinion, stability is more important. So there you have it. That's how we overclock a Dell XPS 630. You can also load hardware monitor. And, uh, on this system, it gives you quite a bit of information here. So we can actually check out some of the temps that I'm currently running. Uh, this would be my north bridge temperature, 42 Celsius. My cores, 30 and 35 Celsius at idle. It's very good. And GPU is up a little bit. It's warm in this room. Hard drive. Uh, intake temperature, 73 Fahrenheit. Uh, the output from the back side of the system is 86 Fahrenheit. Uh, the fans are all on auto, so they actually will ramp up as needed for the heat. There you have it. Thank you for watching my video. No bad comments, please. I don't like criticism. <laughs> Just messing.